Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! We're back! Yay! I love hearing the song again. <laughs> I do too. It makes me so happy, and it seems like it's been gone for way too long. It really has been. It's been almost almost a whole year. Yeah. That's so crazy. Well, we're talking about the show Shameless. <laughs> we're back in season five, finally, after all this time mm-hmm. waiting for it. Um, started out really, really well. It's the season uh, five, episode one, called Milk of the Gods. We'll find out why it's called that in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of milk references in this episode <laughs> yes. between V and breastfeeding and formula and then, you know, Frank later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this episode is really awesome. What do you think overall? Yeah, I thought so too. I thought, very excited. Um, I thought it would, it really, you know, because the first one always has to set up where everybody's at, what we've missed over the last few months in their lives and stuff. So I thought it did a great job of giving us a little, you know, a little taste of each, where each character is at. I think so too. And I thought, I felt like overall the whole episode was kind of edited differently. They, they sort of put different elements into it from what I remember last season. For example, in the beginning, we kind of got this whole um, yeah. scope of, of Illinois, like different parts mm-hmm. of Illinois, at least I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, uh, but before I move forward, <laughs> really quick. We're uh, just so excited. So we excited. forget details. I forgot to say my name. <laughs> I'm back. My name is Joyce, and I'm here with the wonderful JJ. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, so we got that out of the way. <laughs> I figured we all know each other. Yeah, you know? we've been doing this for five seasons, our fifth season yeah. now. Way back. <laughs> um, but as I was saying, we kind of got the whole um, lay of the land of Illinois. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, the really cool aerial shots. And then we go straight down into um, Sheila's house. We'll get to her a little mm-hmm. bit later. But things like that were different. We got more of a sense of the city as a character. Yes. We got more of the city's personality in this episode. And I wonder if we'll see more of that later. Yeah, I thought I saw, thought so too. That really struck my attention, how it really made them seem like they're this tiny, you know, this tiny little place just surrounded by all this other stuff going on around them. I thought that that was really well done. It's true. I mean, you kind of forget they don't just live in this, you know, they kind of live in this little yeah. bubble, but they're part of a much bigger piece mm-hmm. of, you know, area, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's get started. We have a lot of people yeah. to talk about and catch up on. We can start with Debs and Carl, who didn't really have too much of a mm-hmm. presence in the beginning here, but I'm sure it'll get interesting later on. Um, but Debs, we see her sort of being a little more angsty and angrier, yeah. which I kind of expected because, you know, she is getting older. She's mm-hmm. more of a teenager now. She's maturing and wanting different things. Um, but yeah, definitely love seeing this angry side of her. It was yeah, so weird. just stabbing her doll and just really, you know, we find out she's upset because two girls at school have been mean to her and just ignoring her now for no reason, which, yeah, I think we all of us girls growing up can relate to how mean girls can be to each totally. other sometimes. And there is, yeah, no reasoning behind it. And your best friends the week later. So, yeah, we yeah. find out later on in the episode, like we didn't know this whole time why she was being so, so moody mm-hmm. and mopey. But then we find out it's because Holly and Ellie both aren't talking to her for some reason yeah. and at the end she's like f those bitches you know screw yeah. them and which let's be honest probably okay for deb if they're not talking to her you know exactly like, those guys they were, were a little slutty a little yeah <laughs> wasn't ellie the pregnant one yeah then, yeah then holly and then holly was the one like wanting always talking about sex and stuff right yeah like, she was a slutty one that yeah. thought that you know uh deb should probably be having sex right yeah. now and tried to ask her like when is it gonna happen when are you gonna do it yeah. um but that was, and I follow Emma Rose Kenny on Instagram, and that girl has tons of friends. She probably has no problem exactly. yeah. <laughs> in that department in real life, but really cool to see her grow up on the show. Yeah, and, and I kind of like this anyway, because I, I would like to see new characters with her this year, you know? I think we had enough of them last season, so I'd like to see who she meets this year, or, Yeah, you know, what's going to happen with her. We'll explore more of her kind of coming into womanhood. Mm-hmm. Um, that should be interesting. Mm-hmm. 
and Carl, we first see him like right off the bat with a broken leg. Yeah. Which we were like, what the hell? And we wondered, we're like, I wonder if that happened in real life because it just seemed kind of just boom out of the, well, first we saw him on the, the crutches <clears throat> and then we thought, well, did he steal those from the retirement home? Because we thought it was the retirement home that they were, they were demo, to, yeah, they yeah. were uh, breaking down. Yeah. So then, um, but yeah, then you did some quick research oh, and yeah. found out that. I found out that, uh, well, Emmy Rossum, first of all, was live tweeting while she was mm-hmm. watching the show and she basically said that things that happen in real life affect the show and something like mm-hmm. Ethan could Kudkowski actually broke his leg in real life so they had to have Carl have his leg broken in the show which I, was cool <laughs> and I, I wonder how much that if that how much that changed storyline for them you know because if, if they had him running around and going crazy like he's it's crazy that's a good <laughs> like point. if that I mean I, I wonder if it, if it affected Debs in a way too, like maybe she was supposed to have a bunch of scenes with him and they couldn't yeah. do that and it wouldn't work if they changed it any other way. Yeah, it'd be interesting. We'll try to, if you guys know, let us know. Yeah. We'll try to research that a little bit we'll too. We'll do a little investigating. But yeah, we see it doesn't really stop him from causing trouble because he's already like going and stealing wheelchairs. And yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. I'm like, what is he like running towards on his crutches? And lo and behold, it was a motorized <laughs> wheelchair. I loved his his shirt too. It was a bunch of... Um, skeleton hands giving the middle finger. So <laughs> Carl. Best, yes. I loved it. Well, we'll definitely see more of him mm-hmm. in there too. Yeah. Um, well, last season he was causing trouble, you know, stealing um, pills from V's medicine cabinet. Not so much right now. Maybe he'll get in trouble with them later. But speaking of V and Kev, um, you know, they have their babies, they have their twins. Because mm-hmm. remember, one of the twins absorbed the triplet, the yeah. third one in her womb. So they have two kids now. And not including the um, the kid that Kev has with her mom, mm-hmm. Dominic. So we have Dominic, Amy, and Gemma, the three children. Um, but V is sort of having trouble dealing yeah, with everything. We, yeah, she's having trouble coping. And we see um, Kev's really gotten into being on this mommy blog, you know. And he's so into that. So much so that even when she's trying to spice things up and give him a little BJ, he's not into it. And still trying to look online. So oh. interesting with those two. That was so funny. And... <laughs> It's, it's something that happens in real life. I was actually reading something recently where sometimes women, like, they feel maybe not neglected necessarily, but neglected by their husband mm-hmm. or by their baby daddy, um, you know, because they're more into taking care of the kids than they are, like, paying attention to her. So mm-hmm. V is definitely displaying some sort of, like, real life problems which is cool yeah and we see her i mean the struggle she went through with like just even the mom like pulling on her nipples and then he's saying you can use a lupa sponge i mean it just made us hurt we i know like, like, ah! lupa sponge on your boobs <laughs> yeah no thanks and then she she shows him like she gives him a little titty twister and is like how do you like that you know so yeah yeah i'm sure not fun to have them being <laughs> not just nibbled on but it's, bitten and yeah like... <laughs> it's so crazy and poor v she needs a break so yeah. she you know in while she was flustered by the fact that Kevin didn't want to get sexual, um, she told him, "Fine, I'll go work at the alibi. Mm-hmm. Let's switch roles for for a day. See how you freaking do. Like, you yeah. take care of the kids. See how you do." And you know, she wanted to go off the uh, breastfeeding and and give them formula, but Kev mm-hmm. was against it. But mm-hmm. he did all the research that maybe she should have done, and was active acting on it. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean. There's plenty of us that didn't breastfeed that are fine That's and completely fine. healthy, you know. So, uh, you know, you could, you could give her a, br- a little bit of a break and yeah, get her totally. some formula in there to give her a rest. But, but yeah, but I thought it was really cute. We see the, um, him, uh, you know, teaching them about baseball and watching <laughs> the game. I thought that was really cute. So funny. <laughs> so funny. But what was interesting was that scene um, where V came home from work. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't find the babies in their beds and she couldn't find Kev until she went to their bedroom and Kevin was fast asleep with the two girls. Mm-hmm. And that look on her face, like I was expecting her to sort of remember they had that close up of her mm-hmm. for a few seconds. I was expecting her to have like a small smile like, oh, he he's really yeah. good at this. But she didn't. Yeah. She was totally blank, looked really disappointed, actually. Then we come to realize that maybe she was more disappointed in the fact that he f- didn't fail mm-hmm. in taking care of them. Mm-hmm. Like, he got Gemma to poop or Amy, whichever one was. <laughs> Our probably favorite line of the episode, too, wouldn't you say? <laughs> poop, poop, there, there it, it is. is. We yeah. got a hashtag. It probably already <laughs> Loved is <it>. online. <laughs> yeah. Was well, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it's really hard. I mean, I can't even imagine being a mother and it just so... I'm sure she... 
you did want her to like you thought she was going to go maybe crawl on the bed and be with him as a family but yeah i mean i'm sure she just feels like going through so many emotions and just tired and all the things she's dealing with right there but yeah we go down and we see her pop open a beer yeah <laughs> i mean she told fiona she misses her life she misses yeah. her husband she misses you know being crazy and mm-hmm. like kevin told her over the phone in the episode like you used to be a slut like you were kind of a whore yeah. he's like i loved it like a whore with him yeah yeah um yeah because he called it the the madonna whore complex yeah or the, which Where, is why he didn't want to have sex with her what was that yeah yeah that, that went through me for a second too because i didn't know if that was a real thing or yeah. what and i i thought it was going to be something about the singer madonna you know like yeah something. so yeah um but yeah basically it was like because the uh about, about the virgin mary and he's saying now he no longer you know like she's she now produced these kids and it's so like he he's like honoring you know her body and he has her, like a he, different like, vision like, different, of her. like yeah like exactly it's like, like you're the mother of my kids yeah. that's yeah. so weird yeah. i didn't even know that was the thing you're I right did not either me neither <laughs> Oh well yeah. you can't be mad at either one of them no right now they're... anyway and they're always so fun to watch i mean they're just I just love those I two. I know. And I have to say, first of all, Shanola Hampton is gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Flawless. Yeah. She was on our show last season. Hopefully, we'll get her on, on our show this season. She looked phenomenal when we saw her last year, right after she had her baby. And she looks phenomenal in this yeah. season already. Yeah. And uh, Steve Howie, I always had a little crush on. And then <laughs> to see this big, beautiful man oh. with two little babies, I was like, my heart's melting. Oh, <laughs> is he your hall pass? He's my you hall are pass. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I could add him to the list. <laughs> Not that it's very long, but <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. They had a really cute dynamic. Yeah. This episode. Um, yeah. And when V was working at the bar, we see Lip come in. He he's back from mm-hmm. college. She gives him a beer. Um, but yeah, Lip is back from college. And what was interesting was we saw him leaving his dorm room Mm -hmm. and amanda walks in she's like you didn't pack yet she's leaving to go back to florida where her family lives um and yeah they're still together i guess they're still kind of hooking up and doing their thing but i didn't think that like he would stick with her did you i don't know yeah for some reason i didn't either i thought yeah i didn't think that they still would be together but i thought also interesting that we see he's still in with his um roommate at the dorms there and his roommate's already moved you know has moved on to another girl and they're gaming and then they just kiss and go <laughs> at it so it's like nothing's really changed with him but i thought it was pretty funny amanda's reaction to him too as they were leaving and- <laughs> she's like it's been real yeah <laughs> I mean, you, clearly those two weren't good for each other. No. I mean, they were so completely different. I mean, I feel like he's more at home with his new girlfriend, yeah. uh, his roommate and, and his new girlfriend. So, yeah. yeah. But the, she gives him a big, um, well, they have the awkward, com- she gives him the watch. Yeah. And then they're kind of an awkward moment when they're saying, well, are we going to date other people over the summer or not? And okay. Yeah. It's like, well, he, but they both said, I don't know to each yeah. other. It's like, well, that settles it. You yeah. Know? So who knows what will ensue as time goes on in the summer for them. Mm-hmm. Um, we were actually thinking it'd be really interesting. We won't probably see much of Amanda then. That's what we were thinking. Right? Yeah. That kind unless, of mi- yeah. Yeah. Unless she decides to surprise Lip in uh, in Illinois. <laughs> yeah, which which could be like kind of, I guess we'll Disastrous. say for pr- predictions. If he does get a new interest yeah. and then later she comes back. or But I, um, we thought it was interesting his long scene on the train. You yeah. Know, as he's, he's lying all these people and these, you know, the guy drinking, all the people that he's kind of coming home to. And it's like, it was a really kind of long scene, which made you really kind of feel his awkwardness and his kind of yeah. being unsettled, you know, leaving this world where he's kind of, you know, I don't want to say advanced past them, but like advanced to a different part of his life. And now he's coming home to some of the stuff that he has, you know, tried exactly. to get away with. And right away we see, what was that? What was his buddy's name? Um, um, with, oh my they gosh. had the weed, I wrote it down. I Stumpy. forgot it too. Stumpy. Stumpy. With his new yeah. piercings, his like yeah. derma piercings. It's so gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so Stumpy's got new weed and invites him over like right away. Yeah. So it's like, welcome home. It's interesting too because last season he was off to college and it was a complete culture shock for him. He felt like it, it felt like maybe he was um, rejecting it, like, you know, like your body mm-hmm. rejects a new liver. Yeah. You know, 
um like it wasn't something that he was used to and he didn't he didn't like the culture shock and now he comes back after he's been assimilated and everything he comes back to his his hometown and he feels the same way probably you know it's like the people that he's with are no longer on his level as much as he you know still respects them and still you know loves probably loves where he came from Mm -hmm. he can't forget his roots it's still something that he's going to have to kind of get used to again and he maybe he won't maybe he will who knows like his friends are different everything yeah because we see him right away you know he lies to them and then tells them that he stole the watch yeah you know so you can see him his, his struggle but you know i just hope that um he's smart enough now not to get like tied back into the those type of things yeah let's hope so hopefully there. manny yeah. will pull him back in somehow yeah but yeah i love how he he still tries to act like old lip in mm-hmm. front of his friends but us as an audience as an audience like we know that he sort of straightened himself out he's sort of going down this college path and he's mm-hmm. doing really well he's meeting smart people that are at his level intellectually and mm-hmm. you know aren't doing all this like probably aren't doing chronic and knocking <laughs> girls up who are like popping up yeah, babies, yeah. you know like, yeah and then trying to save up money for a dna test exactly <laughs> like yeah. these types of things are something that lip you know got away from mm-hmm. and now here he is trying like coming back he has to stay here for three months yeah. stay back home for three months who knows what will happen yeah and i think now sees a chance to you know create a better life for himself and we saw him applying to be an RA there too um so hopefully he's kind of got his set on straight and yeah like he's trying to get things on a resume or something like being an RA I'm sure something you could put on there Mm -hmm. um and also he when he went to the bar he met up with Tommy right he saw Tommy there and I guess previously he had spoken to Tommy and Tommy offered him a demo job demolition job Mm -hmm. uh he's the one that tore down the the retirement home in the beginning um, so he gives Lip that job, and we'll see in the next episode, you know, how that turns it's out. Funny, because is that the very the first we've ever heard of Tommy having a job, right? Yeah, he's usually just hanging out in the bar. He's just all a the drunk time. in the bar. He even yeah. said when Lip said you offered me a job, and Tommy was like, "How drunk was I?" <laughs> right, you know, like, did I really do that? <laughs> um, yeah. But I think it's good that he's trying to make money for school. And when he said that, my initial mm-hmm. thought was, "But he has a scholarship." But then I was like, okay, he he's keeping his scholarship because he's doing well. So it's probably mm-hmm. just spending money or maybe yeah. something t- that he's saving up for. Yeah, and who knows with all the scholarship covered? Because even when you're an RA, you, you're paid for your room and board. Oh, right? really? Don't, an RA isn't that when you are in the dorm and you're like the resident? And then, yeah, yeah. So you I'm know, pretty I've, sure I you... never lived out, you know, at in in the dorm so oh I yeah <laughs> i loved it um yeah i'm pretty sure i lived in dorm in nebraska in my freshman <laughs> year and yeah so the resident on the floor in the in the dorm gets like their free um uh room and board oh, and then cool. they, they kind of oversee the dorm and so they you know, kind of exchange the room and board for sort of being supervisors or right for looking out and making it's, sure everything's copacetic exactly and... like they're the one that could write you up if you have a party like they they can be the ones that get people they're supposed to keep everything oh, okay organized and that's yeah, cool yeah well, good for Lip. I hope he gets it. <laughs> too. And we also see Lip kind of concerned with Ian. I mean, everyone is at this point because yeah. we find out that he is kind of, that he is probably bipolar. Mm-hmm. He probably has what Monica, his mom, has. And um, um, he's denying it, saying he's not sick. Yeah. He's fine. It, he, Ian's blaming it all on the cocaine that he did at the club. Um, you know, gets you really high, and then once you're off it, it brings you down really low. Mm-hmm. But we're kind of seeing signs of Ian this episode that his his bipolarness, his manics and lows, are still kind of present, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and he's refusing to go to the doctor, like so they can't get him to go. And <clears throat> yeah, I think we see him just and all of his sexual promiscuity. You know, he's just yeah. uh, hooking up with the guys in the grocery store and in uh, Patty's pies. It's so <laughs> easy. All over. For I know. Him. It's so easy for him. And at first, I was like oh my god what about mickey and then i realized okay this is probably part of you know being bipolar at least something that's a an outlet for him Mm -hmm. for his manic for his highs Mm -hmm. um but yeah he's like a little serial cheater and then you know when you start to because i did feel sorry for mickey too and i still do but then you also look at the situation and they're just in such you know chaos where they live with you know mickey's still with but lana and like the it's It's so bizarre i mean they still kind of run the uh, tug and rub, the tug and rub <laughs> business yeah. from Mickey's house, and 
you see Svetlana like give Mickey a cute kiss on the cheek and then you see Ian do the same yeah. thing it's like what is what is this yeah. it's like a little triangle it's so bizarre yeah. and then now the other random girl there with the other with the guy, yeah, ironing you know, top yeah, lips. Like, <laughs> there's a lot going on in that in that household yeah that's so crazy um but yeah, Mickey is running his business still. He's still doing the rub and tug, but then he has a side business. Yeah, we see a new little venture for him this time. So he, yeah, so he basically is a, a moving company and then he packs up the van and then, or the truck and then and sells it off to people. Yeah, it's Mickey, so Mickey. weird. Like he steals things and then he gets paid for them. Yeah. And then he just runs off. You were mentioning how it's weird because you know, the people that he's doing this to see his face yeah. and this guy's face. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm like, that's kind of strange because I can see him running it, but having other people do it for him. But yeah, him being right there. And I mean, because he looked very professional outside yeah. the house talking to him, you know. But then you made a good point. They're like, well, they're moving like so far away that they'd have to... Um, you know, don't know where he's from or yeah. know where, how to track him down. Like you but. said, they're in a 60615 area code, yeah. which is supposed to be a nice neighborhood. And those people probably aren't going to venture down into his neighborhood yeah. and, and, you know, see him offhand, you know. Um, but it, I feel like as shady as his business is, he has it all in order. Like he has <laughs> oh. everything together, which is so yeah. bizarre. Like his his girls are getting paid for the most part yeah. they got beat up a little bit by mr patel yeah. which he sort of gets revenge on later yeah on. <laughs> which another funny scene because he's just like you know talking with lip and fiona and then so funny yeah just goes over <laughs> beats the guy up and then doesn't miss a beat and gets back on comes the conversation. back continues <laughs> as normal yeah um lip and fiona go over to mickey's house and Again, everyone's concerned that Ian's not seeing a doctor. Mm -hmm. And Ian doesn't think he's sick anymore. Mickey doesn't think he's sick anymore. Why? Mickey was like, why should Ian get prescribed meds if he's fine? Mm -hmm. But it's it's like, you know, as much as Mickey wants to take care of him, I don't think he wants to, uh, you know, believe that yeah. he's that bad. Yeah, I agree. I think he doesn't want to admit that the, there's a problem. I yeah. Mean, you know, clearly, I mean, part of him has to know if even he's, you know, he's trying to go to sleep and, you know, Ian wakes him up and is, you know, so forceful and then leaves him again. Like, you, you know, he's he really does know, but he, I think, is in denial. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are, are in denial about this so yeah. far. I mean, we'll probably see more later on that'll really be a slap in the face to mm -hmm. Mickey um, and to Ian himself, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I mean... I, I just I still can't believe how crazy Ian's getting right now. Yeah, like he just has everything stored in him, and it's manifesting in all these like sex capades and <laughs> yeah, you know. And he does such a great job because it's like you just I love watching his facial expressions because you can really see him going through the range of emotions too. Yeah, you know. And you can kind of see that's a good point because he did really well. I mean, he's he's a great actor anyway. But in the scene where they're at Fiona's um, restaurant mm -hmm. and he catches the bus boy right going yeah. into the bathroom, and once he steps into the men's bathroom and he looks at himself in the mirror, yeah. he kind of gives himself like this, oh, mm -hmm. like, "What am I doing?" Look, but he does it anyway. Mm -hmm. He goes into the stall where the guy is, and they end up, you know, going yeah. at it. Um, but I think maybe he has moments like sobering moments where he stops and sort of realizes mm -hmm. how he is, but it's like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. And I think it's like, yeah, but I just can't help it. Like he just has the urge and, you know, needs these things and, you know, and they feel good to him. Yeah. Like he needs to sort of quell all these cravings that he's mm -hmm. having, no matter what kind they are, whether it's working out or you know having sex with mickey five times a night like yeah. i don't know yeah yeah because he doesn't care like it's risky you know right now too he's right there in the bathroom with his whole, all of his family just not very far away you know yeah so, but he just it doesn't really care anymore i know and there was a lot of mention of monica this episode yeah. obviously because they they think that you know there's six gallagher kids that are or five of them are from monica right we got fiona ian carl and lip and yeah, I don't, four or five. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably totally off. And Debs, um, and at least one of them's gonna get you know what she yeah. has. At least one of them's gonna yeah. be bipolar. So it's probably Ian. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yep. Oh, Ian. What, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so there's a lot of mention of Monica, and it made me wonder if we're gonna see her again. And funny enough, Emmy was um, 
uh, tweeting while watching the show, like I said before, and someone asked, are we going to see Monica? And she said, just you wait. Uh, yeah. So I think she'll definitely come into play. Yeah, I think so too. I think she has to, <clears throat> as the storyline progresses, I think they have to bring her back at yeah. some point. Yeah, I think so too. Um, going back to Mickey really quick, Svetlana's pregnant again. <laughs> yes. What's her deal? Yeah, so we find out that she's also making some side money of, of, of her own. She's being a surrogate, so she, she's pregnant. She's very re resourceful. Yeah, she's got it. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Um, you know, but at least it was kind of nice to see, I think, for a change to not see her. I mean, she's still crazy, but not like <laughs> angry and bitter. You know, she was so angry, you know, and vengeful last, oh, last yeah. season. So I kind of liked, I don't know, yeah. I kind of like seeing it. I think things have, things have calmed down. I think if you remember last season, she really wanted Mickey to step up and take care of their mm -hmm. baby. Um, which, do we still, do we know for sure it's his still? I oh my gosh, I'll probably like get shot for saying that, but... I can't remember if that was. A I don't know if we ever got a, Yeah, but either sorry. way, sorry. <laughs> either way, um, she wanted him to help her with yeah. the kid, and I think Mickey stepped up. Business is good on both ends: mm -hmm. the stealing furniture business and the <laughs> rub and tug business. And now she's a surrogate. Yeah. Um, another thing, going along with uh, you know real things happening that changed the course of the show. Um, Svetlana, is, the actress who plays Svetlana is actually pregnant in real life mm -hmm. while this was filming, so they had to make Svetlana pregnant as well. So that was kind of written to the show also, which is cool. Yeah. I like how that happens. <laughs> yeah, I do too. And, and another one that would be interesting to see what their plans were before, you know, exactly. if they had different plans for her before that. Like but. what was what was Svetlana supposed to be doing yeah. if she weren't really pregnant, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Um, let's jump right into Sheila and Frank Aww. and Sammy. They have had a crazy dynamic, it seems. Oh, yeah. Like, we oh, we see them right at the beginning in bed together, which I was excited about. Yeah. I was like, okay, not Sammy. <laughs> Sheila oh, no, and Frank. No. <laughs> but then, then we see our favorite. I still, I mean, Chucky is just to die for. Like, that face. And He's so just, silly. Yeah. Like, if, you know, when he falls off the bed. I don't know. I just, I love <laughs> I love watching so it. silly yeah that that was the scene where you know that we kind of got brought into after the whole mm -hmm. um aerial view of mm -hmm. the city and we get right into sheila and frank in bed together um they're still married mm -hmm. which is nice mm -hmm. <laughs> um and it seems like sheila is really looking out for yeah. frank and really trying to crack down and make sure that he takes care of himself mm -hmm. keeping him in check and yeah Hopefully, yeah. I mean, it seems to be kind of working. Yeah. I don't know. He's getting annoyed. Yeah. yeah. He Well, you know him. He just wants to be off on his own, doing his thing, you know. But uh, yeah. um, Sammy, though, has really just gone, really has major daddy issues. So we see her just pretty much going crazy and then having sex right in front of, you know, I mean, right there on the couch, which is awesome to see how, oh how crazy gosh. that drives <laughs> Sheila. It's, it's hilarious to see Sheila's reactions. It's so yeah. funny. Like, I love the way she gets a rise out of these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel bad for her, but it's she's so much fun <sighs> to watch, Joan Cusack. Oh, so much fun. And just, I mean, when she finds, you know, the dildo under the couch and then the, she found her whole box, oh, no. it's just like, oh, Ew. no, you don't mess with that. Like, her, one of her most prized possessions. So gross. <laughs> it was nasty. Poor, poor Sheila. It was. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, but even watching Sammy, like, you know, when Frank walks by, you know, <clears> oh, you know, am I, am I in trouble? Are you disappointed in me, daddy? Yeah, you know, he sees like, her wow. having sex on, on yeah. Sheila's couch with Ronaldo. Yeah. <laughs> Who's so nasty. So nasty. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but I, to be honest, I was a little disappointed in seeing Sammy this way. Yeah. Last yeah. season, I mean, I know she didn't, didn't seem like she had the best life growing up and now with Chucky living in the trailer and everything. Mm -hmm. But at least she was, you know, a, a careful mother and she yeah. really wanted a dad. And she seemed like she sort of had her routine and her yeah. life together, however together it was. And now that you know frank's okay and her dad is in her life now she's crazy like she's she's not who i thought she was yeah i agree and she was so about taking care of him before <clears throat> so you'd think that she would just be kind of helping sheila too like making sure he took his pills making yeah. sure he stays on track now so i mean she's to... she's kind of offering her help yeah but it's i feel like it's sort of half-assed yeah you know like 
oh, can I get your medicine, Dad? And Sheila's like, he already did that. Yeah. Like, he's fine. And speaking of medicine, Frank is taking, I think I counted eight pills, <laughs> which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. But yeah, Sammy, I mean, like Sheila said, she's working out her daddy issues mm -hmm. and she's trying to get Frank to, you know, tell Sammy to learn your boundaries, like yeah. teach, teach Sammy boundaries because she doesn't have that. Yeah. And sure, like her nose is out of joint because now Frank's with Sheila. And so she doesn't, you know, has to let Sheila be the one to be more taking care of him. But uh, I, I also think it's just hilarious the way their their trailer is just right next to the house. <laughs> I forgot and when that. yeah, when Sheila puts Chucky back in there, you know, I was like, I felt so sorry where she was like, you know, she, he's like, what do I do if my mom brings home a guy again? And she's just like, put a pillow over your head. And, oh, no. You know, just seeing Chucky's face when he kept opening the door. I mean, that kid is he's hilarious. He's tortured now. <laughs> I know. It, he is so funny. He He's going to be a fun one, I think, to watch grow because oh, yeah. I think he'll just be this really funny comedic actor later on. You know? I think but so too. Just, his timing right now is great. <laughs> Especially <laughs> in the scene where he pees for like oh, 90 yes. seconds <laughs> while Frank is taking his medicine. <laughs> I was like, he's still going. Yeah. He's like, I've been holding it all night. Yeah. <laughs> but poor kid. I mean, we're going to see him grow, I feel. I mean, as as little lines as he has in every episode, he mm -hmm. still has such a big impact because it's really telling of, of Sammy's behavior mm -hmm. and how much she's changed. I mean, I, I can't imagine that she did stuff like this beforehand, yeah. at least maybe not since she's had Chucky. Yeah. You know, but now she dyes her hair this disgusting trashy peroc with yeah. trashy peroxide and, you know, has sex in another woman's living room. Yeah. It's just poor Chucky. Yeah, yeah. Poor <laughs> he Chucky sees it all. Sure. He sees it all. Yeah. That and, kid's gonna need some counseling. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and throughout the episode, we see Frank go in and out of the basement, up and down. Like he, uh -huh, he's working, uh -huh. quote unquote. Yeah. He's got this big project that he's not telling everyone, anyone about. It's a huge secret, even to Sheila, who could easily go into the basement and find uh -huh. out, but won't. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I thought it was so gross the things he was collecting, and later we find out he's running his own home brewery yeah. in, the, in the basement. <laughs> yeah, he's almost like a little Walter White aspect in him on this on this brew that he's creating, yeah. you know? <laughs> he's so into it. When I first but, saw it, I was like, what is it? What is he making? Yeah. Oh, yeah. got it. Yeah, and with 130 proof, which you said is... 65% uh, alcohol, yeah. if I'm if I'm correct. I mean, that's, that's disgusting. Yeah. I can't even imagine if... That's not even drinkable, right? No, and yeah, I mean, it's just got, I mean, it's got to just burn your whole throat all the way down. And I, it's funny to see how um, when he goes to, to drink, well, first of all, we see him trying to say that he's only having a beer a day. And yeah. That's his new his new rule and his, his new liver can take it. He's so, a cheap date now. Yeah, because when he first pulls out a beer, you're like, oh, no, you know, here we go again. He just got a new liver. All the stuff he went through last season. You're really still drinking, Frank? But yeah. But it's really Frank if he's not drinking. So I, I wasn't too surprised at that Me but neither. but yeah when we see you know that end scene with him and where he's just chugging chugging his his what did he call his creation um milk of the gods yes milk of the gods <laughs> that, <duh. Tell> um, <laughs> yes um and then the other guy can't even like take one sip of it oh. and, and spits it out oh that's terrible and, i mean and we see him pass out and wake up yes. in the morning and he's being drawn by art students or just a group of artists yeah who found him there naked or did they undress him no he was I think naked he was naked yeah he was naked yeah. so it's like same old frank all over again this time he's got a new liver and he was like so proud because she's just like because someone thought he was beautiful too he's like oh mm. you know she's like we came here to draw the flowers but you you know your body is beautiful You're so perfect you could just, yeah you could just see his little smirk you know i like i don't get that often Thank that's you. what i mean that's <laughs> i felt like he was like yeah you know it's like he's almost rewarded for his bad behavior yeah and, again you know exactly. and just enjoyed it i want to know what happened to him that night that got him into that position I know. that's yeah. so crazy but to see his surgery scar yeah. was you know yeah. it brought me back i was like oh yeah that's right he yeah. had really intense surgery recently yeah and know? still just so skinny too mm -hmm. you know his body's so frail i know that's so crazy yeah um but yeah lots to look forward to for frank and yep. we saw him at the end in um fiona's restaurant where she works now mm -hmm. she works at patsy's pies which, by the way, if I remember Ooh. correctly, um, we interviewed Noel Fisher here on After Buzz TV when uh, Ninja Turtles was coming out. And mm -hmm. he was talking about um, a pizza place called Patsy's Pies mm. that him and the cast members used to eat at, you know, 
during like lunch or when they're not shooting or something. Mm-hmm. It was called Patsy's Pie. So I wonder if that got written into the show because he gave the idea. Yeah. So uh, that was a little interesting yeah. touch and factoid there. Yeah, or if so. they just go there a lot and wanted to give them, you know, give them a little yeah. shout out in the show. It's like you know? Ninja Turtles in the show eat pizza yeah. or in the movie eat pizza. He ate Patsy's Pies pizza. Yeah, in yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a nice little touch. Um, but speaking of Fiona, she works at Patsy's Pies yep. restaurant now. And it's owned by um, her boss, whose name mm-hmm. is Sean, who she seems to have a really flirtatious relationship mm-hmm. with, which kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. Does it? I actually... At work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, casting wise, I like this. Oh, yeah. I'm um, Slaughter... Dermot Mal- 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 <laughs> Maroney. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, I love him. And... and um, I like this. Like, I, I like that. I mean, I like that he's older, and I just I, there's something about those two that I'm kind of liking yeah. so far. He's got like this, you know, mature sort of uh-huh. sexy vibe to him, and he is her boss again. She likes to date yeah, her bosses or, or get involved with them somehow. Yeah. Um, but he um, owns Patsy's Pies or is the boss of Patsy's Pies, and he has a kid named Will. And we see them. We see him and Fiona, Liam and Will, or just him, Fiona, and Liam playing around in the front yard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hot summertime. They're spraying each other with the hose, yeah. just sort of building that pool, that outdoor mm-hmm. pool together. So we kind of get a good sense of their relationship. Like they're friends. They call each other friends, but clearly there's an attraction there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I, <clears throat> and I buy it. Like I like seeing them when they're lying down on their backs in the pool, and clearly like they're comfortable. Yeah. But clearly thinking what they'd like to be doing if there wasn't a, a kid right there, you know? And yeah. it's like this little, you know, I need sure that I like it. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's cool. And, and the dyna- dynamic changes just a little bit at work. I mean, they're still flirty, but it seems like Sean is flirtatious with all the girls that mm-hmm. work there. Yeah. But it, everyone's kind of aware that maybe him and Fiona are more into each other than the other girls. Yeah, yeah. You know. I like this new workplace too. Like I like that the Wanda was hilarious. I thought she was really, really funny. <laughs> yeah. And I just, you know, she had some good one-liners in there. So I like that these new characters are kind of adding a little more comedy to the show too, yeah. you know? So I think there could be some fun interactions in that, in Patsy's Pies this I agree. season. It gives you a sense that Fiona's among people who are, you know, also, you know, need to work and, and, have a routine and, and try to keep their lives together it sort of sets mm-hmm. Fiona on that path mm-hmm. it keeps her motivated to do that and it was good to see her smiling and sort yeah. of healthier again yes and clearly doing well there like everybody loves her they request her she's got um was that oh, Angela yeah Angela who comes in and hits on her and you know gives her a hundred dollars <laughs> that was amazing like, yeah <laughs> So she seems to she seems to be doing you know very well there too people like her mm-hmm. and then you know she's got this band called Jezebel that came in and asked yes. for you liked them. <laughs> I did. They said, are you feeling Randy? I'm feeling Randy. I thought Davis was a cutie yeah. pie. Yeah. And that, I'm like her, a sucker for that accent. So yeah. <laughs> he, he was cute. He, hopefully we'll see more of him. Yeah. He'll be a good maybe trouble perhaps? that's why as, as much as i don't want to see her make bad decisions she's gonna have to so if she's gonna make some i would like to see her make it with yeah him. i mean she wants to get laid and maybe she'll call him <laughs> up eventually she yeah. didn't this episode but um we can sort of see sean jealous or mm-hmm. just sort of looking at her mm-hmm. whenever other guys talk to her huh. um but of course he can't really say anything because he's her boss yes yeah. and they can only go so far even though he's flirty with everybody yeah so, but it's cool how at the end, um, you know, he was there swimming with them with his kid, Will, mm-hmm. and they just have this really cool bond that mm-hmm. I like to see, you know, grow. And I'm glad to see Dermot on the show, too. Yeah. So. And Fiona had a chance there to make a bad decision and have Davis come over. But instead, she didn't. And she um, she didn't. And she um, brought him over, you That's know, invited true. him over, too. So. That's very, very true. Good for her. She's making progress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, do you have anything else to add about Fiona or Sean or anything? I mean, oh, she yeah. she had some good, yeah. you know, developments since last season. Yeah. But. I think that was about all I had, too. All right, cool. We have some news and gossip. Do yeah, you, don't we? Yeah, we do. Let's get on to that. After Buzz TV News. Well, we were very sad to see because we didn't get to watch the Golden Globes because we were here, but we did find out that William H. Macy did not win tonight, which Aww. we were really hoping that he did, but anyway, w- I'm so glad that he was nominated. Very well deserved. We've, we've loved watching him. So. He's a winner in our hearts. Yes, next year. <laughs> yeah. And the only other thing I had, which we didn't see Jimmy Steve tonight yet, which I was hoping we would, but um, 
uh, Justin Chatwin has this whole website you guys should check out. Um, so he, it's called the adventures of Charlie Crow.com. So basically he was um, at a wedding with a buddy and some woman told him that they look like nitro and glycerin. And then she ended up telling him that those were two men that were wild alcoholics and spent time in ditches and went to jail and what a, so anyway, long story short, they decided that they were going to be adventurers like this. And he, it's amazing. He does photography and is, you know, considers himself a big adventurer. So he's, they're going, on all these trips they traveled for um, 4,700 miles from LA to Nicaragua um, and they're trying to do a lot of this stuff like for free with you know little money and, and just documenting their whole um, trip and characters that they meet along the way and also trying to do some good things for some different foundations and really causes cool. and stuff so anyway I haven't got to really dive into it yet but everybody go check that out because yeah. from what I saw it looked like it was really neat and really fascinating he's so. spending his time away from Shameless really well yeah that's awesome sounds like he's on his motorcycle check looked good yep yeah <laughs> Um, well, I already mentioned how um, Emmy was live tweeting during the show, or she was tweeting about the show, and uh, she mentioned that things that happen in real life get written into the show, like Carl breaking his leg and Svetlana being pregnant again, and Monica might come back um, this season. Mm -hmm. I think she will. Um, but one last thing also, Emmy said that she's never been a waitress in real life, so she was asking mm -hmm. her followers how she did. <laughs> so uh, go let her know on Twitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting. She never mm -hmm. had to... Um, work in a restaurant yeah. which is cool she she took on a new role yeah there you go yeah. that's pretty much it let's get into predictions for next episode or throughout the season and now <laughs> you're after buzz tv predictions what do you think this is always my hardest part Me and too. i had one when Me we too. were talking and i was like i gotta write it down and i knew and i didn't and i knew i'd forget it by the time oh, we got no. it got here um wow you want me to go first Maybe you, you go first it? yeah Okay. Um, well, in the previews for the next episode, we see Sean and Fiona having some sort of tiff or an argument, mm -hmm. and he straight up tells yeah. her, chaos follows you around, which is something that we see as an audience, which is something that she probably knows as mm -hmm. Fiona, but thinks that maybe she's going to get better from that. But maybe Sean notices it, you know, already. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe something will start to happen next episode that'll make him understand that she just seems to be like, you know, a trouble looks for her. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knows that she had her anklet, her ankle bracelet and mm -hmm. everything for parole. Um, so I'm interested to see what that's going to be. Maybe, I don't know, maybe she some guy will come out in her life that causes her trouble next episode. And I'm wondering if it's, um, you know, it looks like Ian's really going to kind of have some issues, a lot of issues next week. Yeah. So maybe something we see, we see a gun, we see, so maybe something really escalates there. You see where, something in her family that's mm -hmm. just like, I can't, because he has a kid to look out for, yeah. he's got a business to run. I mean, hopefully it won't jeopardize her job. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And then, um, we said this before, but, um, you know, Lip is coming back to his hometown. It's going to be kind of hard for him to adjust back from being with people that are more on his level. So maybe he'll hate being home for so long all mm -hmm. summer that he'll lash out some way or escape or leave somewhere. <laughs> That's what it was. I thought that um, he's either... I'm hoping going to have a new love interest this year, um, not get back with Mandy, but yeah. I, I want somebody to be new. But anyway, I think there's definitely going to be a new love for him. And then I think it's Amanda's going to come back and there'll be dr big drama. Oh, with yeah. That. There will be a, more drama mm -hmm. for a lip. Yeah. Always got trouble with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait for next episode. Mm -hmm. Next week, we'll be back. Uh, JJ, where can they follow you in the meantime? I am at JJ Jorgens on Twitter and Jorgens JJ on Instagram. Cool. And you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at J Ajuri. That's J A J O U R I. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will come back soon. I'll be on that. And Gotham comes back in two weeks. And I'll be on that podcast as well. So until then, until next Sunday, mm -hmm. we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.